This video is about the concept of equal pressure point in the respiratory physiology. It is defined as the point at which the airway pressure is equal to the intraoperatory pressure. Understanding this concept of equal pressure point will help us to explain many observations in respiratory physiology like uh, why the expiration is more difficult in asthma, why there is an excessive dynamic airway collapse in obstructive disorders, and how does this personally breathing helps in the COPD patients. Let's start by describing the uh, various pressures within the respiratory system. This is a schematic diagram. This outer box shows the chest wall and uh, this inner circle represents all the alveoli um, the space between the alveoli and the chest wall uh, this is the gray colored zone is the pleural space the pressure within the pleural space is called as the intrapleural pressure and outside the chest wall with the pressure surrounding the body is the atmospheric pressure and the pressure inside the alveoli is the alveolar pressure or intraalveolar pressure. The atmospheric pressure at the sea level is equal to 760 millimeter of mercury and all the other pressures are generally referred to as the difference from the atmospheric pressure. For example, the alveolar pressure if it is 761 millimeter mercury it is just referred to as plus 1 or if it is 760 it is referred to as 0 millimeter mercury okay. and uh, this this is the airways which is connecting all the alveoli to the atmosphere the pressure within the airway is called as the airway pressure intra airway pressure or sometimes the br here stands for the bronchial pressure pbr now this alveoli is connected to the atmosphere so there is a direct continuity so whenever there is a change in the pressure within the alveoli it is going to influence uh, the movement of air between the two and it will attain equilibrium so at equilibrium the atmospheric pressure and the alveolar pressure is always equal now the difference between the two pressure is called as trans thoracic pressure that is TPP is equal to uh, alveolar pressure minus the atmospheric pressure. It is zero at equilibrium, the trans thoracic pressure, but whenever there is a change happens, like during inspiration or expiration, it varies from plus one to minus one during uh, the tidal respiration. Next, the intrapleural pressure. The intrapleural pressure is uh, always slightly negative during a normal respiratory cycle it is because the alveoli is trying to shrink due to its elastic forces and also the surface tension forces and the chest wall is trying to get bigger to attain its natural size so since there are two opposite forces acting in this place so the pleural pressure becomes negative so it is for example, it is varies from 754 to 756, so it is referred to as minus 6 to minus 4 millimeter of mercury during a normal breathing cycle. The difference between the alveolar pressure and the intrapleural pressure is called as transpulmonary pressure (TPP). It's also called as transmural pressure, that is equal to the alveolar pressure minus the intrapleural pressure. In a normal breathing cycle, the Transpulmonary pressure varies from plus 4 to plus 6 millimeter of mercury. So this can be re referred as the pressure which is trying to uh, distend acts on the wall of the alveoli and trying to distend it. If the pressure is in less than this, the alveoli will shrink more, or if it goes more than plus 6, the alveoli will try to expand more. So this is the transpulmonary pressure. There is a, another term called as trans airway pressure, which is the pressure difference between the pressure in the bronchus, is the airways P, PR minus pressure in the, the pleural space, intrapleural pressure. Like the TPP, which can be regarded as keeping the alveoli open, this TAP keeps the smaller uh, airways open. Like 
the alveoli which is susceptible to the changes in the intraoperatory pressure which can expand or decrease like the changes in the transpulmonary pressure can cause the changes in the size of the alveoli similarly the smaller airways which are not supported by the cartilage and the bone like the upper airways they are not supported so these unsupported airways are also susceptible to the pressure changes in the intraoperatory pressure so this difference is called as the trans airway pressure let's see what happens in a breathing cycle to these pressures and how does this changes let uh, starts with um, inspiration in the at the beginning of inspiration the intraoperatory pressure is around minus 4 so the respiratory muscles expands the thoracic cage which causes the fall in the pulmonary pressure with more negative so the pulmonary pressure becomes more negative and reaches a peak of minus 6 during a normal breathing so since this pressure is becoming more and more negative this will try to expand the alveoli the expansion of alveoli causes the pressure within the uh, the intraalveolar pressure decreases so at zero at equilibrium which is at equilibrium just before inspiration now it goes to minus one and at the end of inspiration it again the because of the movement of air it again comes back to zero so it becomes minus one millimeter of mercury at the peak so here it's minus one here it is zero so this difference in the pressure causes movement of air from here to here so which causes a neutralization of the pressure now again during expiration this the the inspiratory muscles just relax so this brings the pressure back to minus four the intraoperatory pressure this causes the alveoli to go to its original shape now the volume of air which is higher causes from minus one to go to plus one millimeter of mercury so during expiration it initially it goes to a peak of plus one this will cause the movement of air out of the lungs so again it comes back to equilibrium to zero now these are the two pressures pap and the alveolar pressure now what happens to this airway pressure airway pressure depends upon multiple factors one is uh, the difference between the alveoli and the uh, atmospheric pressure determines this um, bronchial pressure and it also depends upon at what site we are going to record this uh, bronchial pressure or the airway pressure for example during expiration at peak here if it is plus one millimeter of pressure and here it is zero now the movement of air will causes change in pressure but the resistance offered by these airways will decrease the pressure change which actually happened so it is gradually going to become instead of plus one here it is going to become plus 0 0.9 plus 0 0.8 and 0 0.7 and gradually it is going to decrease and finally it is going to become zero so the pressure linearly decreases during this expiration it linearly decreases from here to the mouthpiece and this decrease will depend upon how much is the resistance offered by this airways now if you have noticed this alveolar pressure is always higher than this intraoperatory pressure during a normal breathing cycle so this is much negative minus 4 to minus 6 but this varies from plus 1 to minus 1 which is always positive so the changes which is happening in the bronchial uh, pressures which are also almost similar to this for example if we record closer to the alveoli it is going to almost become let's take a different color if we record here at this point slightly inside this is going to almost follow close to the changes in the uh, at, uh, alveolar pressure if you record much farther away from the uh, alveolus the pressure changes are going to be a much smaller like this so it depends upon where we are recording and how much is the alveolar pressure which will determine the, the airway pressure at any given point of time now since the alveolar pressure is always higher than the intraoperatory pressure similarly the bronchial pressure is always higher than the intraoperatory pressure during a normal breathing cycle so the there is a pressure the bronchial pressure is always higher so it keeps the smaller airways expanded 
but what happens in forced expiration during forced expiration the intraocular pressure uh, goes to much higher like plus 15 plus 20 let's take an example of here let's say let's take as plus 10 so during you know from minus 4 minus 6 it goes up to plus 10 the intraocular has become plus 10 which higher because of the contraction of the uh, expiratory group of muscles and then the size of the thoracic cavity has decreased now this will cause alveolar pressure also from 0 to go slightly more than the intraocular pressure for example if this has gone to 10 then this will go to 14 millimeter of mercury peak so here it is 14 millimeter of mercury here it is 10 millimeter of mercury this is the plus 10 this is the intraocular pressure and here it is 0 now this pressure gradient is going to cause the moment of air and the pressure is going to increase in the airways but it is gradually linearly going to decrease till the mouth for example here it is 14 then it is going to become 13 12 11 10 and so on so gradually it will decrease and become zero now the point at which this the airway pressure is getting equal to this intraocular pressure is called as the equal pressure point that is epp also we can say as the trans airway pressure has become zero that is the difference between pbr minus pip has become zero so this is the point what we are uh, learning to understand now what what is the importance of this point like above this point slightly above this point if you notice here this pressure is going to become lesser than the intraocular pressure so the pressure outside is higher which may try to compress this airways airways is also again susceptible to the changes here like our alveoli now in a normal individual this equal pressure point happens within the airways where it has the cartilage support or as the bony support in people with higher resistance in the bronchus the, the pressure decrease is much steeper and this equal pressure point happens within the airways smaller airways which doesn't have a support so this will cause compression of the airways during forced expiration so uh, this is a normal respiratory system and this is the obstructive disorder patient with obstructive disorder where the airway size has decreased now in a normal individual the equal pressure point happens within the airways which have cartilage support so there is no problem of compression but the patient with have higher resistance the drop in the airway pressure is steeper and then it causes the equal pressure point to happen within the airways which doesn't have support the bronchioles so now what happens slightly above this this airway is going to collapse and it's going to cause difficulty in breathing so this is the dynamic airway collapse which is happening only during expiration in the uh, obstructive disorders and these obstructive disorder patients will try to do the pursed mouth breathing that is they will try to obstruct here they breathe through the mouth and then they decrease the orifice uh, so what will happen it will it will not allow all the air to go out so the air will accumulate here the pressure within the bronchus will rise and it will keep the bronchus open so this will help them uh, to decrease the energy of breathing otherwise every time this airway will collapse and it will be difficult for them to stretch open again by this first lip breathing they will be trying to maintain more pressure within their airways and keep their airways open um, please leave a feedback if it was useful and thanks for watching